Hello everybody. Okay, I have a new setup going on here that I'm just figuring out. So bear with me if it doesn't work out so good. Alright, this video here is going to be about Daniel chapter 4. I'm going to recap a little bit on uh, previous chapters of Daniel that I did in the previous video. And Daniel chapter 2 is uh, probably the most prolific prophecy in, in all of Bible study. And it's the study of the Daniel when Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. It's important to note that this dream was given to King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, to show him what would happen to his kingdom in later times. He was given this image in a dream, and it was an image of this statue. And now the statue had a head of gold. It had um, the arms and torso of silver, the uh, midsection of uh, bronze, and then legs of iron, and then it had feet of iron mixed with clay. And while he watched, this uh, stone was cut without hands and the st during the time of these kings the feet without clay the stone hit the image on the feet and the image crumbled and then the wind blew away all the pieces of the image like the chaff and the stone grew to take up the whole earth and the uh, interpretation of the image was that Babylon is the head of gold. After them would come a, an inferior kingdom, which would be the Persian kingdom. And after them, another kingdom, which would be the um, Hellenistic kingdom. And then after them would come a kingdom of iron, which I determined would be the Parthian kingdom. Because remember, this dream was given to the king of Babylon in Babylon and Rome never took over Babylon the city of Babylon so um, and it's during and then what happened with the Parthian kingdom if you look at the history of the Parthian kingdom it was divided and it was kind of broken up uh, the Parthians invaded from the north and they were tribal people and they took out, took over and, and kicked out the Seleucid Empire kings. And um, that's the Greek kingdoms. And they were not as um, civilized or cultured as the Greeks were. So the people living in the cities of this kingdom, this empire, the Parthian Empire, they looked on their overlords as inferior conquerors like they weren't they had no culture they were kind of barbaric but they had to tolerate them because they had no choice and the Romans um, uh, repeatedly bribed them to join in revolts against the Parthian kings so it was kind of divided and they did not cleave to one another so I think that's what the feet of clay is talking about and then the stone cut without hands. Well, that is the uh, prophetic prophecies in the Hebrew Bible about the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ. Uh, about the kingdom of Christ and the prophecies of Christ. That's the stone the builders rejected. The, st the stone the f laid as a foundation stone in Zion. So that's the stone cut without hands. It's cut with words. And that stone, during the time of the, the Parthian kings, the feet of clay, it's during that time, that's when the kingdom of Christ came to earth. That's when the stone was laid in Zion, the stone the builders rejected. And that became... A king uh, became a kingdom filling the whole earth. And that also filled the Parthian Empire. 
in a little bit different way than it filled the, the Roman Empire. You see, this here was the Seleucid Empire, the Greek, the, the Hellenized period. Babylon is right in this area right here. This is the Parthian Empire. Babylon is in here, in this right there, Babylon. They came from over here, these conquerors, these Parthians. And they came and swept in this way, took over Babylon. Once they conquered Babylon, they won the whole empire. They all fell very easily. And see, the Romans, they had this, and they were at war with the Parthians. So the, the history of Babylon continues here with the Parthian Empire. Now, Christianity has affected different parts of the world in different ways. We mostly study how Christianity affected the Roman Empire. But it also affected the uh, Parthian Empire. This, uh, this was the, um, with the fall of the Parthian Empire, became the Sassanid Persians. And uh, the Parthian Empire was like, Zoroastrian was their religion. It's sort of a polytheistic religion, but it does have more of a central deity than, than most religions, and it is sort of related somewhat to the, the Hebrew religion. Um, they were greatly influenced by the Hebrews because of Daniel and, and the Jews that were involved in Persia. And um, what happened when Christianity came on the scene? This is 300 AD. Same time as the Romans became a Christian nation. These, this uh, Manichaeism started and it spread out over all the way into China and it also spread out into Rome, into the Roman Empire. And Manichaeism, the basic, the very basic form of it is that there is a good and evil and there's like a king of good and the king of evil. Like the God, like God and the devil are equal almost and there's a heaven and a hell which are equally powerful this is Manichaeism and curiously enough the early uh, papists they were stamping out Manichaeism with uh, capital punishment and after a while any heretic was called a Manichae and it was just a general u word used for any, any heretic of any kind. When they actually kind of took on that heaven and hell teaching themselves and God and the devil. Um, that's not really clear in the Bible. In the Bible, God says, I create good and I create evil. And the devils in, in Hebrew literature... The devils are lesser beings than God. God allows them to tempt us in order to strengthen us. And he, and he allows us to rebuke them and to say no to them. So they're, they're kind of a subservient being. They're not equal to God, not, not, not in any way. So this is sort of like how the kingdom of Christ also affected the uh, Parthian Empire very much, where they became like a type of Christian empire as well. So we go, before we go any further, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to uh, see more videos like this and help with the program. And thank you for watching. So now let's switch over to the Word of God. Um, I quickly went over uh, Daniel chapter 2. And if we remember, we went over Daniel chapter 3, where Nebuchadnezzar, his answer to this dream was to build a statue completely from head to toe of gold. And I suppose his Chaldean advisors told him to do this, that if he did this, then his kingdom would have no end 
and he would be the gold kingdom from head to foot. And if he got everybody to worship it, then that would somehow change prophecy or change God's plan. But as, as we found out in the end, after Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, refused to worship the king's image, then, uh, and, and Nebuchadnezzar saw them in the fire and not get burnt, Therefore, Nebuchadnezzar makes a decree. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, language which speaks any things against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. So, you see, the king learned a lesson here, but he didn't learn a lesson because it started off with God giving Nebuchadnezzar the image of the, the statue showing the kingdoms that would come from his time onward. And that hasn't changed, but he hasn't learned that lesson. He feels like he still somehow, because he went through all this effort, that he made the prophecy change. And he didn't acknowledge anything about God being in charge of his kingdom. He just said anybody who insults the God of these three guys, let him house, his house become a dunghill. So let's go on to chapter 4. This is the reason why this next dream happens, because Nebuchadnezzar hasn't learned the lesson yet. Okay, it starts off with him, this is Nebuchadnezzar writing. It starts off with him acknowledging God him by, on his own. It says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, unto all the people, nations, languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God has wrought towards me. This is personal. How great are his signs, and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. The stone that hit the feet of the image, right? And his dominion is from generation to generation. Now he's going to tell the story of how he came to this conclusion. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid. And the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. So now he has to call Daniel again. He has, this, he has another dream because if he didn't learn from the first dream. Therefore I made a decree to bring all the wise men of Babylon before me that they might make known to me the interpretation of the dream. Then came in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, and I told the dream before them, but they did not make known to me the interpretation of it. But at the last, Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And before him, I told the dream. See, so he's still sort of not really all completely on board with the God of Daniel. Because he's saying, uh, Daniel's name was Belshazzar, according to the name of my God. So somehow he's still attributing it to his God. In whom, Daniel, is the spirit of the holy gods. Not just one God. Now Daniel would disagree with that. And before him, I told the dream, saying... O Belshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, no secret troubles thee. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof. Thus were the visions of my head in my bed. I saw and behold a tree in the middle of the earth and in the height was great. The tree grew and was strong and the height of it reached to heaven, 
and the sight to the end of all the earth. So he's become as great as God. The leaves were fair and the fruit much, and in it was meat for all. He was feeding all of the earth. The beasts of the field had shadow under it. The fowls of heaven dwelt in the boughs of it, and all flesh was fed of it. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and a holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said this, Hew down the tree and cut off its branches, shake off its leaves and scatter his fruit, and let the beasts get away from under it and the fowls from its branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of its roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. Now this is important to understand, this vision. Nebuchadnezzar, in chapter 2, he was the head of gold. He had a chance to be the head of gold and the image of a man standing on the earth is the image of the, the empires of mankind down to the end of uh, the kingdom of Christ coming to earth. And, but he screwed it up with building his golden image for everybody to worship. So this brings in a new dynamic. Now God has to answer to this new thing that he did. So now he is a tree and he's going to be cut off, right? And let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. So in, we'll see in Daniel's next vision, the kingdoms are, are likened to beasts. So if Babylon didn't do that golden image, he would not have been included with these beasts. But he is now going to be a beast, and the kingdoms of the earth are now, in prophecy from now on, are going to be likened to beasts. So th this actually did change prophecy, but it didn't change it in the way that Nebuchadnezzar was aiming for. Let his heart be changed from a man, and let his beast's heart be given to him. So that's like it was the golden head of the man, now he's going to be a beast. You see? And let seven times pass over him. Now what are seven times? We'll look at that in a minute. This, this matter is by the decree of the watchers, and by the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High rules in kingdoms of men and gives it to whoever he will and sets up over it the basest of men. So this is the intent. This is the lesson. The Nebuchadnezzar and all mankind needs to learn that the Most High God the God of the Hebrew Bible, he rules in the kingdom of men and he gives it to whoever he wants. It's not about anything else. It's about what God sets up. Even today. This dream I, Neb King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now though, O Belteshazzar, Daniel, declare the interpretation thereof for as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation, but you are able. Remember in the last time, Daniel said, I'm not able. I asked God, and God told me. Now he's saying to Daniel, you are able. He still doesn't get it. Okay? For the, the spirit of the holy gods is in you. It's, it's not the spirit of the holy gods in Daniel. It's Daniel's relationship with the one true God. But Nebuchadnezzar can't, he just can't fathom that. 
Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, so that now now it now the word of God is naming Daniel his true name. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him, because he understood the dream. The king spoke and said, Belshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble you. Belshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate you, and the interpretation to your enemies. The tree that you saw which grew and was strong, whose height reached to heaven, and the sight to all the earth, it height, its height reached to heaven because he challenged God over the fate of the kingdoms of the world. Okay? And the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and it was for meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of heaven had their habitation. It is you, O king, who are grown and become strong, for your greatness is grown and reached to heaven, and your dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, and, and in the tender grass of the field, let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field, till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which is a come, come upon my lord the king, that they shall drive you from men, and from your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the fields, and they will make you to eat grass as oxen, and they will wet you with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over you, till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and gives it to whoever he will. So this is it. He's going to be driven from men, and eat grass like a beast for seven, and seven times will pass over him. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree, the roots, your kingdom will be sure to you. After you shall have known what the heaven, that the heavens rule. So this is not permanent. Your kingdom will come back to you after you know that the heavens rule. Therefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable to you. And break off your sins by righteousness, and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of your tranquility. And all this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar at the end of twelve months. So I guess he did give something to the poor, because at the end of another year, twelve moons, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spoke and said, Is not this great Babylon, Babylon the great, that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? So he's given himself credit for everything. And while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to you it was spoken, the kingdom is departed from you, and they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make you eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over you, until you know the most high rules in the kingdom of men, and gives it to whoever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and he ate the grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers, and his nails like bird's claws. So he was like a madman. 
And at the end of the days, so this is an interesting phrase, at the end of the days. So this prophecy is like an end of days prophecy. But it's also in his life, in the king of, in Nebuchadnezzar's life, the prophecy fulfills in his life, but it also has ramifications for the entire image of that man that went down to the Parthian kingdom with the feet of clay. At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes to heaven, and my understanding returned to me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that lives forever, whose, do whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say to him, What are you doing? That means no one can question him. At the same time, my reason returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and my brightness returned to me, and my counselors and my lords sought me, and I was established in my kingdom, and, ex and excellent majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth, and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Because Nebuchadnezzar walked in pride and he was abased by God. So you can see how Nebuchadnezzar, he tried to change prophecy on God and he ended up getting it changed on him. And his, his kingdom was restored to him, but it was the very next king, Belshazzar, um, Belshazzar or something, he, he, he lost the kingdom to the Persians. Uh, starting in verse 3. He carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit, a con sit upon a scarlet-colored beast. A woman represents a church. A beast is a kingdom. Full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. This is a church wearing purple, scarlet, gold, stones, pearls, golden cup in her hand, full of abominations, and the fil filthiness of her fornication. Fornication is talking about a church that is also worshiping God and also it is the wife of God, and also worshipping other gods. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of the harlots and abominations of the earth. And she was drunken with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said, Why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and ten horns. And then it gets even more complicated. But this is, uh, you know, when we're studying Daniel, we're starting to see this uh, mystery Babylon the Great. So there's the first time in Daniel chapter 4 when Nebuchadnezzar, praising himself for what he had built, says, isn't this the great Babylon? So, so this is, a, this is a, um, something about this woman riding the beast. Um, and on, on her forehead, she is Babylon the great. Because she built a kingdom that covers the whole earth. And she 
attributes it to herself. So we'll look at Daniel chapter 5 next time. Thank you for watching. Um, I was a little bit late with this uh, video because I went away for a few days uh, with family for Christmas time and uh, I was off the grid where I was so I couldn't do anything so say uh, la vie. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.